Welcome everyone, Lionel here. I hope you enjoyed my last video about common replies on text messaging sellers for real estate. I'll be going over several topics just like that that should add value to your business. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on information that can help sharpen your deal closing app. In this video, I'm going to be going over fundamentals. So listen close and tell me what you think. So no matter what business you're in, if you're dealing directly with people or with sales, then you're gonna be dealt some objections, okay? It's unavoidable and it's best to just familiarize yourself with them so that you know how to handle it. There's, I can't tell you how many times and how many different businesses I've been in where somebody asked me a question and I didn't know how to answer it or I was put in a situation and I didn't know how to handle and I was just like, <laughs> I don't want it to happen to you because it costs time, it costs money, and we know that we can't give that up, okay? So there's a couple things I want to talk about before I go into these techniques, okay? Number one is practice. It's extremely important. My first mentor told me the five Ps. That was proper, preparation, prevents, poor performance, okay? Which just means practice. No matter what you do, you practice. If you want to get better at basketball, you're not gonna throw a football back and forth. You're not gonna throw or uh, kick a soccer ball back and forth. You're gonna be doing basketball things. You're gonna be dribbling. You're gonna be practicing free throws, chest pass layups, everything that's basketball related to get better at basketball. And handling objections is no different. You wanna practice your objections so that you get more familiar with them and you're more fluent with it whenever you're out on the field. Number two is experience. Okay, it's gonna be a combination of practice and experience that make you a master. If you want to box, right, and you hit, you're hitting the bag, and you hit the bag for five years, and you're like, okay, now I'm gonna get into a fight. Well, you're not used to being in a fight. You're not used to like moving your, moving your head around, you know, or taking a hit. So your fight might not go so well, okay? So it's gonna take both practice and experience to make you a master. There's a few ways that I practice, and I wanna share them with you. So the first one, you know, it takes you back to like the, the school days, and that's um, flashcards. You can go to dollar store and get like a stack of index cards. On the front of one, you put your objection, all right? And on the back, you put your rebuttal or your counter. And you can do it by yourself, just pick it up and read the objection and then try to get back to it as fast as you can, make sure that you're right. So it helps you become more fluent so you don't sound like, you know, you're pitching uh, like a script, you know, you don't sound robotic, you know? And um, you sound a little bit more like you, you make it your own. So whenever you're dealt with it with a seller, you handle it a little bit better. So flashcards is a great way of practice, and uh, I, I still use them to this day. Another one that's extremely important that we do here in Affinity is role play. Whenever somebody joins the team, uh, we do some. Well, we do a few things, but I'll make another video about what we do when we hire somebody. But one of the main things that we do is role play. They have to role play with me. I give them common objections that I hear on the phone or on the doors, and kind of like a multiple different personalities that I'm used to hearing or dealing with whenever I'm on the field so that they can get a little bit familiar with them before they go out and try it for themselves. You know, I love fighting games like Smash Bros, Injustice, Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom, all of them. And my friends always ask me, man, how are you so good at these fighting games? And I'm like, look, man, there's no secret sauce about it. I'm not a special person. I literally just practice. So people like to go and play against each other, and that's fine, I love to do it too. But before I do that, I go into a practice mode where it's just me and a dummy, and I literally just practice my button combination. You know, over and over. Objections is no different. You, it's, it's like a, you get muscle memory. I get muscle memory from, from doing my button combinations. So then whenever I'm actually playing somebody, I know how to handle the scenario, you know? So that's the combination of practice and experience that makes me better at gaming. But the mind is a muscle also, and you want that muscle memory to work for you, so that's why you wanna practice your objections. And as a matter of fact, I actually brought this over to the business because now in the morning before we actually get on the phones or go out and knock on doors, we have, uh, we have like five to 15 minutes of just role playing. Everybody pairs up, we do some role plays, so everybody's already kind of warmed up and ready to go when the time comes. And then a uh, third way that we do to practice is uh, me and Quentin made this game up where <laughs> anytime that you're on the sales floor, somebody can ask you a question and it's gonna be an objection and you have to come back with a rebuttal within two seconds. So they'll be like, I'm not ready to sign yet. You know, and they point at you, you have to come back with the counter or rebuttal and if you can't respond within two seconds, you gotta pay $2. 
and at the end of the month, whoever has the, the best numbers in the business, like met their quotas or just overall doing the best, gets to keep the money. But the point of the game is to keep everybody on their toes and hopefully nobody has to dish any money out. Check it out. Hey, what's up, Paul? How you doing? Pretty good. How you doing? Doing good. Hey, um, where would I move if I sold this house? That's actually a good question. We uh, do more than just buy property here. We help you with finding a new place and also assist you with moving expenses if that's something you need. All right, on your toes, bro. What's up, George? What's up, man? Hey, what you working on? Doing a little virtual D for D. Nice, man. Hey, uh, how'd you get my number? I got the... Uh... So Joey, what's up, dude? Hey, what company do you work for? I work for Infinity Cash Offer. We're a real estate firm here in San Antonio, and we specialize in purchasing properties. Would you be interested in an offer? All right, all right. I gotta talk to my oh. wife about it. You gotta be quicker than that, George. That's two dollars. Leon always catches me off guard, but I feel like I get him too sometimes. Is that a good book? Yeah, a lot of good information. Do you see a for sale sign? Well, I actually called to see if you were selling because if you had a for sale sign, I would have asked you how much you want for it. But do you have a price in mind? What are y'all playing? SNK. I'm not interested right now. Well, I was just calling to see if you'd be at least willing to hear out an offer, because when the time comes, I'd like to be the first call you make. Remember the five Ps. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. So practice, go out there, get some experience, and keep practicing. Also, if you have a different method that you use to practice, please let me know in the comments below. I'm curious about what other people do to stay on their game. My next video is gonna be about handling objections and how I handle every single objection that comes my way. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you there.